Next up, we have, I have the pleasure to introduce Charlene Greenhouch, our town planner, and Jim Joyce. Jim, can you tell us what committee you represent? Uh, I represent the planning board. Uh, can you give us a, just a sense of what the planning board does. Well, the, the planning board um, basically uh, is, has some re regulatory responsibilities, um, including the review of subdivision plans. Um, it's also a special permit granting authority for commercial plans, family dwellings, uh, and it's also responsible for zoning amendments. Great. And do you have any current vacancies? Yes, Mike, we do. Uh, actually, uh, the board is comprised of uh, seven full members uh, and two, two alternates. And currently we have one regular member uh, vacancy and we have two alternates. And uh, two of the regular members have terms ending in June, so we certainly hope they will re-up and, and continue helping us. Yeah. And when do you meet? Uh, we meet uh, twice a month mm -hmm. on, uh, on Tuesday. And, um, Generally the second and fourth. Second and fourth, yeah. yes. At, and at what time? Because I know I watch your televised <laughs> programs. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, uh, Chris, we, we uh, start at 6.30. Yeah. And, and, you know, rarely do we go past uh, uh, 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Okay. Any special um, experience that you would say that somebody would need to be on the planning board? Do you want me to do this one? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, I mean, anybody who has the ability to read a plan or who has a general knowledge of zoning, but really it's anybody who's willing to learn and understand. And um, I serve as a staff person for the planning board, so I do a lot of homework for them to make them prepared. Um, help them read the plans, help them understand the zoning that is associated with the particular application that's for them. So really it's anybody who has an interest in, in learning um, and understanding the whole process. Yeah. Great. And Jimmy mentioned uh, June. What happens in June? Do we, we lose a member, lose two members? Okay. or? Yes, Mike. Actually, we're going to lose. Uh, we're going to lose two members, and, and we'll, unless they re-up, unless they re-up, which we're hoping, because mm -hmm. we've got. I think Charlene would agree. A pretty good team. Yep, I think it's a really good board. Yeah, and um, but we, you know, I, I think the permanent role is one that we we really need, Mike. And um, and honestly, I think it would be great if we could get two alternates to mm -hmm. to be involved because then we would be. Uh, getting ready for yeah. for certain vacancies mm -hmm. and and we would always have a quorum especially if there's a a, a very important mm -hmm. and you have a great uh, way of learning as an alternate exactly mm -hmm. exactly yeah. you know. and an alternate actually can act on special permits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, through statute they're not allowed to act on subdivisions but certainly through special permits and we see way more of those than we do of subdivisions okay what are we forgetting to ask you that you'd like to add? You. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Yeah. Well, you know, I, 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 uh, I really uh, en enjoy the planning board, and Charlene does a great job and makes it very easy for us. One of the things, though, that, you know, at, at, from my background and experience in, uh, in heavy manufacturing, it, it it strikes me that we, we probably should do a better job um, of pushing our leadership team to do, um, to, to at least give us money or a budget so that we can develop a short term and a long term plan. And, and you know, our capital budget this year, for example, that's it, going before the voters is for $71 million. And that's a lot of money for a town of basically 12,000. Right. And I, I think it's important for anything that you're running is to, you know, have a plan. You know, you plan your work and you work your plan and you move forward. And, and frankly, um, I think it's, we could be as a, as a community and, and as, a, as a group of leaders or contributors more responsible if we had a plan and we looked at what the impact of that plan is on our our fellow mm -hmm. citizens and and I think I think you know you can't have a plan and and without looking at what that impact is from a cost uh, yeah. benefit uh, viewpoint and I, I feel pretty strongly about that 
And, and ironically, if I might, we do have a request in <coughs> for funds to move forward with the local comprehensive plan, yeah. okay. which will be based on the Cape Cod Regional Policy Plan, which just mm -hmm. got updated this year, um, earlier this year, and that will include um, a component that's never been in there, and it's actually a capital plan. Um, so that's it will really be good. looking at those things and, and moving forward. Um, not just with zoning and land use and wastewater, and, mm -hmm. but also other types of capital that are included in what should be your local comprehensive plan. So mm -hmm. yeah. hopefully we'll get that funding and get that going, um, you know, July 1. Thank you for mentioning that, Charlene. When was the last time we updated our comprehensive plan? Oh, you put me on the spot here. I believe <laughs> it was 2011. Um, that plan was not accepted by the Cape Cod Commission. Not that that's a bad thing, um, but what you do strive to do is have a plan that's good for your own community, but also meets the, the requirements and standards set by the regional policy plan, um, because I think that is important. And also there is some funding mechanism available if you do have an approved plan yeah. by the county. So and That's important, and it's also important to note that we just re, re uh updated our, our housing production plan. We updated our mm -hmm. housing production plan, our open space and recreation plan, and our uh, wastewater comprehensive plan. Yes. Yeah, and so that, we're ahead of the game. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. how that ties in here is I think there's a lot of um, committees that take part in these plans. Absolutely. And a lot of different, mm -hmm. different sections of everything that we're talking about today that are e involved in yeah. creating these plans. Absolutely. Yes. Pr pretty much everybody that you've already spoken with today yeah. will be part of creating that local comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. and that's why it's comprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the term. Hence yes. the term. Yes. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I have nothing else for them. But just a closing closing statement from me. If if we are done, if, if this I is the last. I think we are. Interview. I have a couple things to say. Some dates after you, and that's okay. great. So I just I wanted to point out that we have um, over the last few years really encouraged people to get involved, and really encouraged people new blood to be part of the committees. New ideas, new thoughts. Um, we've tried our hardest to make this not an intimidating thing for people. We've tried yeah. to make it a welcoming <coughs> thing for people. And in the interview committee, Don Howell and myself, one thing that we point out to everybody is that you are representing the town and the taxpayers mm -hmm. of the That's town. Right. And that how you treat the people when you're on a committee, how you treat your fellow committee members, and, and equally, if not more important, how you treat the public that is before you is extremely important. That it is not, that it, none of this is personal. Um, and that we're relying on you to be a great representative of the town. That's right. But these committees are not intimidating. There's a lot of great leaders. There's people that have been on committees. We, we heard from Matt Hart earlier. I believe he's been the chairman of the Waterways Committee for upwards of 17 years. Um, mm -hmm. We have not had complaints on that. So there's a lot of great teachers yeah. that will help people mm -hmm. get involved in, in the town. Great point. Mike. I'll just uh, wrap up uh, with a little plug uh, for the Harwich Voter Information Committee, which I'm uh, chair of this year. And uh, what we try to do is, uh, as we've been asked by the Board of Selectmen, inform and prepare voters on issues to be addressed at the annual and special town meetings and at the local annual election. And of course, we, uh, we uh, encourage people to register to vote. We're a five committee member. We're one short now, and in June we'll have two vacancies. So I hope you're interested in meeting on, uh, with us, uh, joining us. We meet uh, Wednesday, third Wednesday of the month at 5 o'clock in the playroom here. <laughs> okay. It was available. Anyway, and then some important dates. Uh, Tuesday, April 16th is the last day you get to register to vote so that you can vote at the town meeting in the local election. Uh, just about the 19th of April, the warrant will be available. And then our town meeting is the 6th, uh, Monday, May 6th. And uh, we are going to, following that, on the 14th, we being the Voter Information Committee, we'll have a candidates forum for um, the 10 vacancies that uh, will be up for uh, election. Um, so we'll do that at the, the Griffin Room, 6.30 p.m., and we'll, you'll see much more publicity about it. And I'll just remind you, on the 21st of May is the local election. And that's a wrap, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yep.